Let in the sun. That's by Take That. It's Dan Radio Style. Hope everybody out there is having themselves a great day. Uh, this is uh, going to be a fun little show. I'm hoping you guys kind of enjoy enjoy it as I'm trying to present it because I'm, I'm using a very good analogy to sort of try to paint how journeys are. And then I'm going to try to kind of backstep and go back to that analogy and then kind of show how that is our process in trying to manifest our people in our lives and certainly our specific person. Uh, it's a very, very important to try to look at this process as what it is, a process. So for whatever reason, you don't know this person, maybe that's your specific person, you've never met them before and you're trying to arrange that, cool, there's going to be a story there. Maybe there's someone that you've already got some story with. Maybe it wasn't necessarily an ex-relationship, but maybe you've known each other a while, kind of known each other from afar, been texting here and there, and you'd like to really take it to the next level, right? And that's got its own story, plus backstory, plus some disappointments, plus some good stuff, right? Just like any story. Or it could be a situation where you've got maybe an ex, right? Maybe there's been a breakup and you're trying to get back together. Well, that's got a total story. And in a lot of cases, there's some pretty bad stuff that went down. Maybe it's kind of why you broke up, right? You don't usually just break up on good terms. Hey, everything's awesome. I love you more than life itself. You know what we should do? We should celebrate it by breaking up. Nah, it doesn't usually play out that way. So when you've got these stories that we're living, it's really important to remember that there are days in every one of our stories. Or So the way I'm going to try to an analogize it, if you will, so please go with me on this. Journey of a thousand miles, some fictitious journey. I'm kind of seeing it more as a road trip, I guess, is kind of uh, my way of looking at it. You know, you're hopping in the car, you're packing up all your stuff, and maybe there were some uh, issues in the packing, because that's kind of some of the preparation, but the journey hasn't even begun yet. So this is maybe more the stuff internally to you, maybe the struggle it took to even get this relationship going, maybe it was your finding the law of attraction before you began any of this journey to your person of love or person of interest, Right. So the journey really begins once you hop in the car, start it up, and get going. So, of course, in most journeys all along the way, there's all sorts of places where the scenery is amazing, right? So you have parts of the drive that it's just, oh, my God, that's so gorgeous. Just looking at that is amazing, and it's just kind of awe-inspiring, and it's just beautiful, and you're so grateful that you're just traveling. You wouldn't normally ever see this particular scenery. You're only seeing it right now because you're traveling. You're moving through this place on your journey to your, quote, destination, which, you know, will be the specific person, right? But along the way, depending on when you leave, depending on how things work out, you might hit some traffic jams, right? The traffic jams totally blow. They slow you way down. You got cars in the way. You got people cussing at each other, all sorts of horrible things, and just a lot of frustration and, and angst and boredom, right? Let's really want to get things moving along. So traffic jams are always a bit annoying, or maybe you have that moment where you go to grab the soda, right? And you go to open it and it sprays over now. Now you got this kind of mess. Now you got to, ah, crud, we got to deal with this. Oh, this should not have happened. That's so horrible. You clean up the mess, but whatever, a little mess occurs. Maybe you drop food, barbecue sauce on the seat. Maybe it's on your clothes, whatever. You end up stopping at a rest stop, right? You got to get some gas along your way, stop in, and now you're in this weird public restroom that's freaky and I swear it seems like they clean it off by shooting a garden hose around right but that's part of the journey and you're just like ooh, had this moment it's like ah I don't know how I feel about this it's kind of weird it's kind of ah might be driving along and look over at the car next to you some cute little kid's got his face pinned up. This really probably would have been more back when I was younger because we didn't have car seats until you were like 40. I don't even know what age you're allowed to get out of a car seat. Now, I, I do truly think it's somewhere around 16, 17, 18 uh, when you're allowed to not have to be in a car seat. If anyone could comment, that'd be great. If we got anyone in that age range, that'd be good to know. But long story short, some little kid's poking their face at, looking at you, being all cute. And you're like, oh, look at that little kid. How cute. Makes you think of kids, whatever the heck it does, right? But that's just like one of those little memorable moments. Oh, you remember that kid we saw on the journey on the trap? It was, oh, it was so cool seeing that little guy. It was cute. Might even have been one place where maybe you turned the wrong way. Maybe it was when you came out of the gas station. Instead of going left, you went right. You went kind of driving off a little ways, and you're like, this doesn't seem right. Like, I should have found things a lot sooner than this. Ah, this can't be right. I'm going to turn around. And you head back the other way and eventually get back on track, hop back on the freeway or highway or interstate, and onward you go. 
Now, one thing that's really important to notice at this point, because we're almost to our destination, that we have really never once questioned whether we're going to get to our destination, have we? Our destination is almost a guarantee unless some horrible thing happens, like a horrible car accident, right? A nuclear missile strikes the city I was planning on going to right before I get there, and I just see a mushroom cloud. I'd be like, well, I guess we're turning around. It doesn't look like a good, where to, good place to go. I think the water slide's going to be closed, right? So again, we've never questioned the fact that we're going to get to our destination. Our destination is assured. It's assured because we did things that have been shown to get us from A to B. We are doing things that we've done in the past and shown, yeah, when I drive 10 miles and I know where I'm going, or 16 kilometers, whatever, doesn't have to be even equal, right? When I drive that distance and I know where I'm going, I know in the past that I hop in my car, I either A, use GPS, which is so cheating, or B, I have like a piece of paper with instructions on it, right? And I know when I get to this street, I make a right. And then when I get to this street, I make a left. And then, oh my God, I'm there, right? Cool. I've done that a bunch of times. I know for sure it works. Now I'm going to do a long trip and I still write down directions. The only difference is I'm just certain parts of it. I'm going to be on for, you know, hundreds of kilometers or miles. Uh, and then I might maybe get to a different freeway or interstate and then go up a little bit. You know, that's the only difference. It's the same thing as the small thing, only bigger, longer. But you never question it because you know. You know where the end is. You know the process. And you know this works. So, of course, a lot of you are like, oh, I see where you're going with this, Dan. Yes, of course. Our finding our specific person or our love, our soulmate, whatever, the next real relationship of love and all these wonderful things that we're planning on finding is a journey. It's a journey. And we know because we've played with the little things, right? We've done the green lights. We've done the bottled waters. We've found money. We've found whatever. All of the things, the beach ball that I like to talk about or parking places, whatever. We've done all these things. Many, 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 many times, right? So we know it works. Okay? So now we're going to go for something that's a little more of a long distance. A little more of a journey. It's going to take a hair longer than it did to get a parking place because I can drive down there right now and get a parking place. It's, it's not, uh, you know, 150 kilometers away. It's like literally like five kilometers, right? It's not that far. I don't know why I'm breaking. I've still got a lot of people in the U.S., but whatever. Have fun with me. Miles, kilometers, just make it, make it the same. It doesn't really matter. So along the way, a lot of times, maybe we go periods of time where we don't get to talk to the person that we care about in any way, shape, or form. It's kind of like, um, you know, just maybe it's a dark time. Maybe we're driving at night. Whatever the case is, might happen. Maybe it's something we've chosen. So maybe we made a wrong turn. And at some point it feels awkward, like yesterday, the show from yesterday, right? Maybe it doesn't feel right. And you're like, yeah, no, I need to, I need to consider changing my course. The direction I'm going right now, it's not, not working. And then we start heading in the right direction. And it's like, oh, yeah, okay, cool. That feels better. We might have moments where they don't text us back. We might have moments where we want to talk to them on the phone and it didn't work out. Uh, a comment that was made earlier, and I love it, and I love it, and I, I'm jealous, frankly. I'll be totally honest, I'm jealous because I, this, I would love to have this uh, be the issue I'm having right now. And, and I know stuff's coming, so I, whatever. But that being said, it's at the point where they basically finally got together after a long period of time of not and had a wonderful experience together. But then after she left and went home, it was kind of like, ah, I wish he would have texted me. I wanted the good morning. I want to, like, we already want to get back into the regular things that it used to be. And it's not right now. And then we kind of get bummed. We're like, well, maybe it's not going good. Maybe it's like, well, everything went awesome. You got all the things you wanted, your compliments, your everything. Everything was amazing. And you're, only issue is, is we expect to be to the destination now. And it's like, no, you're not quite there yet. You're like that last little bit of distance. Yeah, you're achy. You've been driving a long time, right? I get it. But you know where the finish line is. You're on the last part. You actually see, you know, Sacramento city limits or something, whatever, right? You're like, all right, we're on the out, you know, the metro, uh, metro, metro, metropolis. There we go. I'm on the outer banks 
of where I'm planning on going, but certainly by no means am I there. I've still got another 30 minutes. Ah, I want to be there now. Well, I get that, but you're not, and you know you're not. So enjoy the fact that you're almost there. You only got 30 more miles. Now you're in a city, a lot more cars, a lot more stuff starting to happen, right? It's getting a little more interesting. Things are picking up, right? More people, more stuff. Same thing in the relationship. You're talking to each other more. It's a little more special when it is happening. And you're planning your next event together. And really, once you've done two, three, four, five events together, whatever they are, dates, hanging out, movie nights, whatever. Once you've hung out four, five, six times, probably things are going very differently than after your first time. And if you remember in the case of maybe your specific person, if you've never dated them, then imagine when you first dated somebody. But when you're a specific person, if it's someone you've dated before, imagine what it was like when you first were meeting, when you first were hanging out, when you first were going out. First time or two, you weren't just jumping right to it. Some people do. I know. I know. But for the most part, you go on a few dates, you hang out a few times, you get to know each other a little better, and then it gets to that point where it builds and crescendos up to this, I have to be around this person all the time. I love being around this person. And then you're together, right? And then our internal fears and dramas and stuff take over, and we start freaking out about weird stuff, and we start us pushing out, and we start, we're not dealing with that on this particular show, but we're dealing with the fact that we're trying to remind ourselves, or I'm hoping to remind you, that this is a journey you're on. And there's going to be times where things are going to feel weird. You're going to have your sodas open up in the car where something ugly happens and you've got to deal with it and cleanse it and let it go, right? You can't just hold on to the fact the entire destination, the entire journey that, yeah, but you remember 700 miles ago when you opened that thing in the car? Ah, ruined everything forever. No, I mean, it sucked and hopefully you got it cleaned up, but no, you still saw some beautiful scenery. You still had that weird rest stop, rest stop experience. Still got lost. Like, you still had a journey. There were still things that were happening. That one episode was that. It was an episode. It was a day. It was part of the journey. It was one day within the uh, whole experience. That was maybe when they were dating someone for a short period of time, and it made the car sticky, and then you finally just like, dude, we, we got to buy some wipes and clean this. This is driving me insane. I keep sticking to the armrest. This ain't going to happen. We got to change this, right? So that's it. And that's maybe when the relationship ends is when you finally get it cleaned up. And all of a sudden they're single again and they're like, ah, that person was a freak. Believe me, us guys, we're good at finding the crazy ones too, right? So especially when we're right out of a relationship, usually the very first relationship people get into is not usually a good one. They call it a rebound for a reason. It's usually a rebound. Not always, but usually. Again, we're playing, playing the numbers here. So try to... Remember, it's a journey. It's a process. Stop letting what's happening right now, right today, be the gauge of how this entire journey is going to be. Don't don't let the, you know, for anyone that's been to an amusement park, don't necessarily let the size of the line dissuade you from the fact that the ride is actually very cool. That's why so many people are waiting in line for it. Now, granted, you might get to a point where you're like, well, I've been on that ride eight times, waiting in line an hour. Nah, nah, it's not worth it. The first time you go on it, though, wow, it's life-changing. It was worth an hour. Oh my God, that was so amazing, right? Same kind of thing. All these things ultimately are going to be worth what we're putting into them. We just have to remember that this is a process. We're moving through these things day by day by day by day. Emotional change by emotional change by emotional change. Even once you've gone on your first date again together, and then you go back home, There's still a day where that person needs to be like, man, that was so much fun, right? That's the next day for sure has got to be along those lines. And if you're playing any of these weird games, you got to go three days before you're even allowed to call, right? But you got all these like, you're not supposed to immediately go jumping back on it. You're just, society says that's a bad idea. Just about every book out there says that's a bad idea. You know, some of us that live passionately don't understand all these rules, but whatever the hell. You try really hard to kind of, you know, not mess things up, right? So you don't want to go too fast. You don't want to be saying, I love you on the first date, right? There's, it's a process. Date number four is when you're dropping I love yous. All right, well, date number four, it may take two weeks to get there. It may take three weeks, depending on how often you're able to go out, depending on schedules. So your first date back, ah, you might still be two, three, four weeks away 
from what you want, but you're there. You're in the final stretches. You're 30 minutes away from your destination. You're in a great place. And for any of us that maybe aren't that far along, understand it's a destination. You know where you're going. You did the imaginal work. You know why you did the imaginal work. There's your direction. There's your destination. There's your directions on your piece of paper. You've done the work. Some stuff's going to happen along the way, so be it. You're still staying on your journey. You're still heading in the direction you're supposed to go. And if you get lost, you can always turn around and go back. But again, it's a process. It doesn't happen like that, and it's not going to, and it can't. So get rid of the urgency for sure. Understand it's a journey. Go into it knowing that. Understand there's going to be goods and bads. Understand there's going to be times where they do what you want and times they don't. Also understand a lot of this stuff is controlled by our thinking. We've done shows on that too. I'm not trying to get into you know, the heavies of it. I'm just trying to help you understand it's a longer term, and I'm trying to bring that into the light. I'm trying to make that a little more obvious. Right For a lot of us, who's like, well, we should be together already, you know, and that's not really realistic, considering like you just like just got done calling each other's names yesterday, right? Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, give, give it a little time for crying out loud. Come on. So again, hopefully this helps. Hopefully it makes a difference. Uh, going out with a really cool song um, by Katy Perry. I'd never heard it before, and the video is just bizarre. Um, and it so makes me think of some crazy stuff. So anyway, I don't want to get into all the crazy, wacky conspiracy junk, but uh, this one totally <laughs> gets into that. Anyway, going out, Katy Perry, chain, chained to the rhythm. I should learn to talk, chained to the rhythm. It's Dan Radio Style.